My friends, I speak to you from beyond your dreams, an old woman whose hands no longer tremble with love. My voice once spoke of six million candles that rose to the sky, and now I sing again. And you who gather here, good people who have all you need, your families, your friends, your city of lilac and rose, your boxes of blue light in your living rooms, your internet with its endless poems. Tonight at this temple, what gift have I left to give you? I have my last song, my memory of another time, a question of the eternal soul like a light still inside me. Did I do enough with my life? When I lived among you, I was known as Eva Lassman, born Eva Bialograd in 1919, that old time of horsemen, valor, and trains. In Lotz, my Polish home, evening skies burned electric red like a beating heart, and every map that was ever vague seemed clear. In their black coats and hair curls, our Hasidic men davened at shul, rocking back and forth on their invisible boats of glory, while our women held the wanderer's moon in their busy hands. My family of Jews carried 30 centuries of sorrow off a few small stands of joy. My Ochik, my father, held me on his lap and talked of the great light. Eva, he said, God will keep his promises, though not always how you expect. My mother, my matka, taught me to knit curtains for our windows and light candles for Sabbath. When my brother Chaim was born, she smiled. Eva, be grateful for this world and always love the children. When my older brother Moshe's daughter was born, I held her tiny fists in mine. Lord, I smiled, she will be our butterfly. Can you see my family there? I once had photographs. There are no photographs anymore. Much happened to my family and the Jews. I learned there is a light so infinite it cannot be seen until it flickers. My friends, did you know everything can be taken from you? The world can hate itself with the fury of love while you wander in the thick of it. Throughout my life in America, people asked, Eva, how could the Jews not know what was coming? My answer, hate happens slowly, near firelight and singing, while children playing in the snow breathe air white as a loaf of bread, and old people sit together, comparing their wings. The radios fill with loud lies, the streets with tyrants, but we say to one another, when have the Jews not known a bit of hate? When the Nazis ordered, wear the yellow star, we raised our heads in pride. When the police took our bicycles, we thought, it's better to walk anyway. When a young German soldier, blonde fuzz on his cheeks, ordered me to clean the sidewalk with his underclothes, I refused. With my underclothes, I refused. He beat me with his black stick until the flower of my body became no more than flesh attached to his brutal rapture. Yet still, I did not think I would have to become other than myself. How could we not know what was coming? There are questions a Jew asks for which all the answers are dead. The Nazis broke down our doors. Juden schnell. They chased us through the grainy fields. Eva, hide, my family cried. Eva, save yourself. Matka, who sang me awake to this life, lost her heartbeat to the fleeing. My Ochik died retching and pockmarked with disease. Moshe and his wife and daughter shot dead. Chaim, little Chaim, held on to his ragged clothes until a naked boy at Auschwitz, he burned to ash. I fled to Warsaw, where the days of time closed to me. 
In that ghetto of grief, I became a woman. I learned to read the maps of God's silence. Friends, when you cannot save your own family, forgiveness of yourself becomes the worst cruelty imaginable. When the Nazis set fire to our ghetto, we who survived were herded into cattle cars. In the iron moan of trains, we rode to Majdanek. A rabbi near me whispered, we must remain brave, but Lord, what trail is the Jew following? We arrived at walls of echoing screams as if God could make a hateful symphony. I begged the soldier at the garrison, please let me keep my last family photograph. He put his gun to my head and he said, you may keep it in death. In the falling snow, I watched the last paper of my life turn to ash. People have asked me, Eva, how did you few souls survive the camps of terror? My answer, we decided the footprints of the Jews must not disappear from this earth. So we moved rocks from one wall to another to prove we were alive enough to move rocks from one wall to another. We breathed just enough air each day to hold in our small hands each night the beating heart of shattered things. My friends, what would you have done? Would you have given up on the world? Would you have hated God? Would you have closed away your love? I tried to hate God. I tried to close myself away. But I was a Jew who had lived for many years in a garden of the beautiful sun. And though I lost my family and my home, still an ancient poem returned to me. Still a light appeared in the crack of an old doorway. Still, shadows promised mysterious truths of that light. Matka whispered, Eva, will you sing a song for us? And Ochik, no matter what, Eva, you must carry God's stars, even in your trembling hands. So I prayed, Lord, if I die in this place, Please make my bones into wax for your lit candles. People ask me, Eva, how could you keep your faith in that dark and godless time? Friends, I do not know why God brought us to the grave of a thousand spectacles, but in the name of all who had once touched my baby skin, I could not blame that light. People say, but Eva, God abandoned you. I say, God was the presence of light even in the darkest dark. People say, but Eva, that God is not enough. I say, there is no greater God in the universe. When the dying mothers with their empty arms and the dying fathers with their darkened eyes and the children sobbing before their burning commanded their angel of God, Young woman, you will survive. I heard also, young woman, what promises will you keep? Twenty-five years old, rags for skin, I promised all I had, the eternal lightness of seeds, that ash rising from smokestacks would carry with it weightless births on other shores. When the Russian soldiers came, their faces sordid and grim. When they gave us back our freedom, that dull magnificence regained at the cost of everything. I promised to live. My dears, I have seen paradise. It is wherever you breathe freely. I walked half dead from Idonic to Lotz, saw tefillin, tzitzit, and hair curls again. 
saw a Torah again. I met a skeleton from Buchenwald who still breathed. Zeb Lassman and I learned how to eat and drink again. We tasted milk and candy. At an altar of broken glass, we married. There are six million reasons to love and no reason not to. Holding hands at the rail of our ship to America, Zeb and I watched wind slide across the waves. How beautiful. Eternal light wrinkled the water like jewels. In America, we had three sons, Eero, Joel, and Sylvan. They became the stars God gave us to carry in our trembling hands. And our boys grew into men and married, and I became a grandmother, a bent lily with a slight accent, butterflies clinging to my stem. One day after Zeb had gone, my granddaughter helped me hang curtains on my windows, for I could no longer lift my thin arms. And with her kind voice, she asked me why I had no photographs of my childhood. I told her my story. Her eyes filled with angry tears, and we held each other. We talked a long time of the old worlds. Finally, she asked, Booby, should I hate the Germans? I spoke my truth. Jews must never hate. We must use that ash for our flowers. My friends, my dears, this is my song. I am a Jew, and Jews were born to plant flowers, even in the garden of a thousand sobs. Do you understand, then, do you understand the beauty of being here in your time, in your place? Will you choose to see what you must do? You don't have to walk through fire. We did that for you, so that now you are free to dream. You don't have to love as if the death of love is all you'll ever have. We did that for you also. What you must do is keep your promises. Care for your family as a promise and take photographs. Let them be your masterpiece. And when your life is hard and tiring, promise still to cherish it. And when your marriage does not fulfill you, promise still to practice mercy. And even when God seems to disappear into his own thoughts, promise still to choose between the sweet and the bitter. And you who always want more, 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 promise to love what you already have. And you who sit complacent in a gilded cage, find your journey and a star. And when terror comes knocking on your door, say while you're cooking in firelight and your children play in the snow, when hate hisses on your internet or television or radio, your God is not the right God. Your children are not as holy as my children. Promise to fight that hate with every breath you have. No matter your creed or color, Never let the ash of hate cover our human footprints. And when in your lives you lose sight of God's stars, when you think, I cannot have faith anymore, remember why the first flower opened its petals to show its fragrant heart. It felt encouraged by a light so vast, such an infinite, blazing eye, it sought truth even in darkness and flickered there, a piece of creation ever reborn. 
I am the voice of Eva Lassman, born Eva Bialograd in 1919. I was a Jew who survived the excesses of God's masterpiece. When my life ended at 92, I knew the truth. Truth is not some loud answer to a human fear. Truth is a question as fragile as the world's most fragile child. What will we do with our lives? I gave everything I had to mine so it would not merely be taken. Now I end my last song with love for you and your homes, with reverence for my life and yours. I end my song with hope that you will now and always ask yourself, what will I do with my life? In a voice so loud and clear, your children's children will hear your determination long before they're born. My dear friends, I hope you will find and feel as I did the freedom of being alive. And may you learn the lesson I learned. No matter how much you suffer in a human lifetime, nor what mistakes you think you've made, when in your life, God opens your soul and asks, will you keep the promise I made to you at creation? You answer, yes, Lord. Yes, I will, to my last heartbeat, to the last action of my last breath, to the last flickering of my light. My life will be the promise you kept. <laughs>